Welcome to the nudity in the Mormon temple, 1842 to 2005 video. All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about the washing and anointing ceremonies that go on in the Mormon temple. Um, where did these uh, ceremonies come from? Some people conjecture maybe some of it came out of masonry. Uh, D. Michael Quinn thinks that maybe uh, this washing and anointing ceremony came uh, from a Christian pseudepigraphical scripture entitled The Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs. This was a testament of the dying commands of the twelve sons of Jacob, I guess the Jacob that's mentioned in the, the Holy Bible. Uh, so in this, uh, this testament of the twelve patriarchs, it says, The first of them anointed me with holy oil. That also happens in the washing and anointing in the temple. Uh, the second washed me with a clean water. That also happens in the temple. And clothed me with a glorious robe down to the ground. Sounds familiar too. The third put upon me a silken garment. When you go through the washing and anointing, after you get done, you get your uh, garments that you're supposed to wear night and day. And the third shall have a new name. Also, when you go uh, into the temple, right after the washing and anointing ceremonies, you get a new name, I believe. Uh, so this all sounds very familiar, right? It's, it's from this uh, testament of the 12 patriarchs. Uh, and Quinn, Quinn says, since 1798, the American edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica called these the initiatory ceremonies of the Eleusian Mysteries. Initiatory ceremonies. Uh, Mormons have also called the washing and anointings uh, the, the initiatory. So a lot of similarities here. Anointing with holy oil, washed with water, putting on a robe that goes down to the ground, getting your garments and getting a new name, and they called these the initiatory ordinances. Uh, is this all a coincidence? Doesn't, doesn't seem like it is, does it? Pictured above, I guess we have uh, some of the naked people in these uh, El Uysian <laughs> uh, mysteries. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about a lot of the changes that have occurred in the washing and anointing ceremony or the initiatories. We'll just call them washing and anointings from here on out. Um, the prophet Joseph Smith said that ordinances such as the washing and anointing are instituted in the heavens before the foundation of the world and are not to be altered or changed. Well, this whole video is going to show all of the alterations and changes in, in this uh, ceremony. All right, a few preliminary statements uh, from some different historians and di different uh, people. This one is from uh, Fawn Brody uh, in No Man Knows My History. She talks about this washing and anointing ceremony, and she says uh, that the men are stripped. That means stripped naked. They are washed, anointed, and then, as in the Masonic ceremony, dressed in a special garment. So she's see seen some similarities with the, uh, the Masonic ceremony as well. But uh, just pointing out here that these men uh, are stripped naked uh, before they go through this ceremony. Uh, she doesn't mention the women, but it's the same thing with the women. Okay, a statement from uh, Thomas F. Odea. Uh, he was a sociologist uh, who wrote a pretty good book uh, in 1957 called The Mormons. He's pictured above. He says, on arrival uh, to the washing and anointing, they are bathed. Bathed, like in a tub, which we'll get to each separately by one of the same sex. So it's okay if you're heterosexual, right? You have a woman touching a woman, a man touching a man, but what if you're LGBTQ plus? Uh, <laughs> it might be pretty erotic uh, for those that are same sex attracted as the church likes to say. All right, so they're uh, bathed uh, separately uh, by one of the same sex and they are anointed with oil. All the important organs are anointed including the procreative, which is the genital area, which we'll talk about. All right. Uh, D. Michael Quinn uh, talks about this in his book, uh, Same Sex Dynamics Among 19th Century Americans, which came out in 1996. I uh, love Quinn, have, have all of his uh, stuff. Uh, he says, since 1842, men have washed with water and have anointed with olive oil 
various parts of the naked bodies of other men during the Mormon endowment ceremony, and particularly the washing and anointing ceremony. So, uh, you know, if you're same-sex attracted, as he talks about in this book, you probably get aroused by touching all these uh, different parts of the naked body of the same sex. All right, same source here from Quinn. Uh, he says, like men, women have washed and anointed the bodies of women during the LDS Endowment Ordinance since 1843, uh, who, who were also naked. Okay, Quinn also talks about a different kind of washing and anointing uh, ceremony that went on in the early days of the church. Uh, this was women healing women, uh, women washing and anointing other women uh, in childbirth. Uh, a 19th century woman would directly wash and anoint with oil the back, the hips, the breasts, the abdomen, the thighs, and the genital area of another woman. Uh, to heal somebody or to have a successful childbirth, during childbirth, etc. Uh, not sure. He says the genital area, so they're probably not directly touching the genitals. We'll go over that more on uh, other slides, too. Okay, one of the few Mormons that has commented on this issue uh, is Mormon scholar Lester E. Bush. He put out a book called Health and Medicine Among the Latter-day Saints, 1993. And in there, uh, he says that the washing and anointing involved unclad initiates. Unclad just means naked, naked initiates or candidates. The ordinance in case of women was always performed by women. And of course, uh, the ordinances for men were always performed by men as well. All right, some more information from uh, Jim Whitefield, pictured above. He put out a five or six volume uh, set of books on Mormonism and the Bible, uh, one on the Bible. He says, original initiatory work or the washing and anointing required a complete washing where the initiates lay naked in bathtubs. So they're getting a little bit more specific and we'll go over a lot of evidence for this. Okay, another source uh, for a preliminary uh, statement is from Chris Jensen, pictured above. He put out a book recently called Obscure Mormon Doctrine, Uncommon Beliefs of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, 2021. He says, originally the recipients of the washing and anointing were completely naked during the ceremony as various parts of their body were literally washed with water and anointed with oil, totally naked in a tub. In these early days, there was no shield, which uh, we'll talk about later. Okay, a statement from Oliver Cowdery that goes back to 1836. This was actually a preliminary to the washing and anointing ceremony, but kind of similar. Um, this can be found in David L. Berger's book, The Mysteries of Godliness, A History of Mormon Temple Worship. Uh, so, uh, so Oliver Cowdery says, after the pure water was prepared, we called upon the Lord and proceeded to wash each other's bodies. Somebody else is washing you. You're not washing yourself. We proceeded to wash each other's bodies and bathe the same with whiskey perfumed with cinnamon. So uh, a bath, uh, probably water in there and whiskey in there and also cinnamon, kind of trying to imitate what they did in the Old Testament. Uh, this we did that we might be clean before the Lord. Okay, so uh, Berger continues. Uh, the earliest accounts of the Nauvoo Temple Endowment indicate that the initiatory washings followed a literal Old Testament model of actual bathing. So they're in some kind of a tub or some kind of a font. Okay, Berger uh, continues here. Uh, large tubs of water are specified in the separate men's and women's rooms, large tubs. The anointing was performed by liberally pouring consecrated oil from a horn, some kind of a ram or some kind of a, a horned animal, uh, filled it up with oil over the head and allowing it to run over the whole body. Pictured above, we have a, a, an actual picture. Somebody snuck into the temple, as I understand it, and uh, took a picture of the washing room or the washing and anointing room in the Salt Lake Temple 
1906, and this is what it looked like. Uh, you had this large tub in there uh, with a stool next to it. So you'd get in the tub, fill it up. You'd be washed by somebody of the same sex. And it's my understanding they had about 10 or 12 of these in the Salt Lake Temple uh, around 1906. Okay, the Mormon scholar Lester E. Bush uh, talks about this in his book, uh, Health and Medicine Among the Latter-day Saints, 1993. He says, by the Nauvoo period, the liturgy associated with washing and anointing echoed the language of Proverbs 3.8. He says this washing and anointing uh, was performed in a large tub. Okay, so this from a Mormon scholar, one of the very few who will uh, mention this. Okay, they talk about this uh, in the book, uh, the Nauvoo Endowment Companies, 1845 to 1846. It's by Anderson and Bergera. In there they say that tubs for the washings and anointings were donated to the Nauvoo Temple by Brigham Young and Heber C. Kimball. So in these early days, 1845, 1846, tubs uh, were in the Nauvoo Temple uh, for the washing and anointings. All right, so Mormons did not like to discuss uh, the temple ceremonies. There was actually severe penalties in there if you ever reveal it. Uh, the secrets outside of the temple. So it's really hard to get people to talk about these washing and anointings and whether they were naked, whether they were in a tub. Uh, it's very hard to find any Mormon sources about this. Um, so some of the sources I use in this video are, are going to be considered anti-Mormon, but that's what we have. <laughs> uh, the good thing is we have a lot of confirmation, a lot of agreeing accounts. So it's I think it's pretty easy to, to tell what happened. Uh, but uh, there's not going to be that many uh, sources from Mormons in this video. This source here is uh, from uh, Mercy R. Thompson, a testimony uh, that she gave in the Temple Lot case in 1892. And she would not answer the question about Washington anointing. So here's what, what it says. On, on uh, November 1st, 1843, uh, they questioned her. Did they anoint the whole body with oil or just the head? Mercy answers and says, that is a question that I do not feel that I am called on to answer. So she wouldn't answer and they ask her a number of times in different ways and she just refuses to answer this question. It seems uh, like she was coached uh, probably by uh, leaders of the church. Uh, Temple Lot case, um, we're looking at the uh, Community of Christ Temple here. Uh, what is that in Independence, Missouri? Okay, one of the few sources we have uh, from a Mormon or from a general authority uh, comes from Heber C. Kimball in his diaries. Uh, December 8, 1845 entry in his diary. Uh, he says, John D. Lee and others have been fitting up the stoves in the two west rooms. He's talking about rooms in the Nauvoo Temple. Fitting them up with stoves. Uh, as they will be devoted to washing and anointing and to heat water. So in the washing and anointing ceremonies, they needed to heat up all this water, John D. Lee and several other men, I guess. Uh, we have two large tubs or troughs, or I think they use other words for that in there as well. Uh, two large tubs, three men can wash in either of them at the same time. So really large tubs, uh, able to fit three men. Um, but these were in the Nauvoo Temple uh, for the washing and anointing ceremonies. Uh, pictured above, uh, early uh, picture of the Nauvoo Temple. All right, so about a week later, uh, we have another account in the Journals of William Clayton, December 15, 1845, entry. Um, four men were to attend to the fires in the washing rooms of the Nauvoo Temple. Again, they're bringing in these stoves, these heaters of some kind, uh, to attend to the fires uh, to heat up the water that would go into these tubs. Um, all right, so they attended to the fires, also to the heating and carrying in of water. These four men, so it's probably a lot of water, right, bringing in uh, carrying in the water 
and assisting when needed in the washings. We commenced receiving those uh, who were going to be washed and anointed. All right, some more information in the uh, Nauvoo Endowment Company's book by uh, Anderson and Bergera, 2005. Uh, talking about the Washington anointings, obviously, uh, they were then escorted to rooms for the initiatory ordinances, the women to the northwest room in the Nauvoo Temple, the men opposite the main hall to the southwest room. Okay, same source here. Uh, there they disrobed or became naked and waited to receive the ordinances of washing and anointing. When called upon, they passed through a canvas curtain and entered a tub where they were washed from head to foot. And notice it doesn't say they washed themselves. It says uh, they were washed, and this is how it was done. They were washed and anointed by somebody else uh, on their uh, naked body in a tub. Okay, another account in the Journal of Enoch Trip, February 1st, 1846 entry. It says that Heber C. Kimball came to the house of a Mr. Windsor P. Lyon in order to rebaptize him into the church, maybe to rededicate himself to the church. And they sent up to the Nauvoo Temple and got a large bathtub. Interesting, in the Nauvoo Temple, there was this large bathtub. We know what it was used for, right, from other sources. But they brought it out and uh, rebaptized Windsor P. Lyon uh, in that large uh, bathtub. Windsor is pictured up uh, above here on the left. Okay, an account uh, from the Warsaw Signal, February 18, 1846. Uh, we're going in chronological order here like I usually do. It says in there, uh, there must always be two candidates, a male and a female, presented for the endowment at once. And, uh, you know, the Washington anointing or the initiatory was the first part of the endowment. Uh, the candidates are first taken into a room together where they are stripped of all their clothing. Yep, this is, is true. All right, same account here in the Warsaw Signal. Uh, they are made to wash each other from head to foot. Yep, that's true. Afterwards, the candidates are brought together still in a state of nudity into a room where they are allowed to remain together alone as long as they see proper. That part is not confirmed uh, by other sources, so I don't believe that part is true. <laughs> uh, going into another room, still nude, where they are allowed to remain together as long as they see proper. That's not really what happened, uh, even in the early days of the church. Uh, but they were naked in a bathtub, and uh, they were made to wash each other from head to foot. All right, so two months later, uh, we get a letter from a lady named Emmeline. Uh, that she wrote in to the Warsaw Signal, April 15, 1846, because she wanted to kind of clarify what was said earlier, which I have already clarified. But Emmeline uh, says, I was divested, I was divested of all my apparel and in a state of perfect nudity, and I was washed from head to foot. That's all true. All this was done by sisters in the church. None other were present. It is false to say that men and women are admitted together in an indecent manner. So yeah, that, that I agree with uh, too. All right, an account from Van Dusen uh, in a book called Positively True, a dialogue between Adam and Eve, the Lord and the devil called the endowment, 1847. Some people are gonna call this anti-Mormon, that's fine. Uh, but we have enough sources uh, that confirm each other uh, as you'll see as we go along in the video. Uh, so Van Dusen says, while applying water and oil to different body parts, officiators pronounced appropriate blessings, your eyes that you may see the glory of God, your ears that you may hear his voice. Okay, uh, same source here, Van Dusen uh, continues. They would also apply oil to the nose, the mouth, the back, the breast, the vitals, the loins, or the pelvic region, the arms, the hands, the legs, and the feet. Uh, so for the breast, I, you know, I guess for the women, they kind of touch the uh, upper part of the breast, is my understanding. They don't touch the nipple. Uh, for the loins or the pelvic region, they, they kind of touch somewhere in between your genitals and your hip, kind of in, in your groinal uh, area. 
Uh, that's how it was for me. We're going to get uh, other accounts. Usually they just say uh, loins, though, and you, know, you can see what loins are uh, pictured above. Okay, uh, same author here. Uh, I guess her name is Increase McGee. We just said I am on previous slides. Increase McGee Van Dusen in a different book or pamphlet called The Mormon Endowment. Uh, what does it say? A secret drama or conspiracy in the Nauvoo Temple. Uh, 1847 this came out she says we are now ordered by the conductor to divest ourselves of the remaining part of our clothing basically become naked they now put us in this bath and washed us all over from head to foot all right increase McGee uh, continues the same uh, book or pamphlet uh, I guess she went through in 1846. This came out in 1847. Uh, we are all this time rolled and tumbled in the bath. We are thus anointed all over, even to the soles of the feet. And I guess they would pour a lot of the oil into your hair. Your hair just becomes uh, soaked with oil. They'd have to bring in a lot of bottles uh, of this oil for each person. And I, I think you brought your own oil. Okay, another account uh, from the Mormon uh, John D. Lee in his diary, February 5th, 1847. This was in regards to uh, John D. Lee's second anointing, though. So it gives us a little bit of an idea of what how that went on. It was, they did do like some washing and anointing in there, and uh, I'm not sure what they still do. This is another thing that Mormons are not supposed to talk about. See the picture above. In regards uh, to the uh, second anointing, do not attempt in any way to discuss or answer questions about the second anointing. This is in a manual, a Doctrines of the Gospel uh, Teacher's Manual. But John D. Lee says in, in his diary, about nine in the morning I was washed in baking soda and water from head to foot. Afterwards in spirits or uh, distilled alcohol, and then was anointed in the like manner. So apparently they did some kind of washing and anointing that was similar uh, in the second anointing. All right, another source here from uh, T. White in the Mormon Mysteries book, 1851. The officiator applies the oil with his hand to every part of the man's naked person, uh, nothing accepted. Okay, another source uh, from John Hyde Jr. Mormonism, its leaders and designs, 1857. I was told to undress and was then laid down in an ordinary tin bath. It's interesting that it was tin. Uh, the ceremony consisted of washing one all over in lukewarm water. Uh, pictured above, we have the floor plan, I guess, of the Salt Lake City Endowment House. <clears throat> Uh, this was completed in 1855, so two years before this uh, book came out. Uh, so John Hyde, I guess, is probably talking about having his washing and anointing done in the uh, endowment house. Um, if you look kind of in the middle here, it says the initiatory room. And you can see uh, two stools, it looks like, and two bathtubs uh, up against the wall. And we'll blow that up on the uh, next slide. All right, so the floor plan here, Salt Lake City Endowment House. You can look at uh, the initiatory room here. It looks like two uh, big tubs up against the wall here. Uh, probably some kind of um, curtain or wall in between them. All right, so here's another diagram or uh, another floor plan that somebody wrote up for the uh, Salt Lake City Endowment House. You look here kind of in the middle. It says anointing. Uh, anointing number two and anointing number three it says and then it says the gents the gents bath and the ladies bath in other words the gentleman's bath and the ladies bath and then probably some kind of a divider in between all right so here is the washing and anointing room blown up you can see it says gents bath and ladies bath anointing anointing uh, so yeah interesting Okay, an account from uh, Mary Eddy uh, V. Smith in Nelson W. Green's book, 15 Years Among the Mormons, 1858. Uh, so Mary says, Here we were undressed and washed in a large tub of warm water by a woman who is ordained to that office, 
And then we were anointed with consecrated oil by another woman. Okay, another account from a J.H. Beadle, Life in Utah or the Mysteries and Crimes of Mormonism, 1870. The female candidate is stripped, placed in the bath, and washed from head to foot by a woman who is set apart for the purpose. And pictured above, we have a washing and anointing going on, I guess, of some kind. Um, in the holy bath, it says on it, um, but not in the bathtub. All right, another source that I don't think anybody else has found. Uh, it's from a Walter Mansfield. It can be found in a George R. Maxwell versus a George Q. Cannon. Some kind of a contested election here. Uh, might be a lawsuit, I'm not sure. 1873. Uh, Walter says, I was taken into another room and stripped, or I stripped myself, and I got into a bath and received the washing from a man named J.D.T. McAllister with water. All right, an account uh, from Fanny Stenhouse in uh, her book, Tell It All, 1874. Uh, Eliza R. Snow, pictured above, conducted me to one of the bathing tubs, and placing me in it, she proceeded to wash me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Okay, same source here. Uh, Fanny says, when I had thus been washed clean, uh, Eliza R. Snow wiped me dry. So that's kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, washed and anointed her while she's naked and then wiping her dry. Okay, an account uh, from Ann Eliza Young, wife number 19, book 1875. Uh, she's pictured above one of the wives of uh, Brigham Young and divorced uh, him. One of 10 divorces that Brigham Young had. Uh, in our room were several large tubs filled with water. I was received by a Mrs. Eliza R. Snow, so same as the last slide, who placed me in one of the tubs and washed me from head to or wash me from my head to my feet. Okay, Anne Eliza Young continues. Uh, After I had been wiped dry, Eliza proceeded to anoint me with olive oil. I anoint your breasts that you may prove a fruitful vine to nourish a strong race. Basically feed your children. Uh, uh, I anoint your loins or your pelvic region that you may bring forth a numerous race. Okay, another account uh, from a pseudonym uh, GSR, Mrs. GSR, Lifting the Veil article in the Salt Lake Tribune in 1879. Kind of blurry and hard to read once you find it. Uh, but in there she says, After I was undressed, I had to step into a long bath, about half full of water, when another woman proceeded to wash me. Okay, Mrs. Uh, GSR continues, um, I objected strongly to this part of the business of being washed in the tub, but I was told to show a more humble spirit. Okay, uh, Mrs. GSR was anointed with oil from a cow's horn. Uh, this was on her head, her ears, eyes, mouth, and every part of her body. Okay, uh, GSR was anointed on her bosom that she might nourish the children whom I might raise by my husband. And she was anointed on another part of her body, I guess the pelvic region, that I might raise up a goodly seed. Okay, uh, from the diaries of Leonard John Nuttall, August 25th, 1882 entry, talking about the Logan Temple, uh, pictured above. Uh, in the afternoon, Presidents Taylor and Smith decided that bathtubs at the Logan Temple shall be six feet by two inches long for the males and six feet long for the females, uh, etc., etc. This decision was telegraphed to Logan. So in 1882 here, we got bathtubs in uh, the Logan Temple, both for the males and for the females. These, of course, are for the washing and anointings. All right, uh, another source here, W. Jarman, uh, the author of USA Uncle Sam's Abscess, Hell Upon Earth, 1884, etc., etc. Uh, we are ushered into another room called the bathroom and ordered to disrobe. 
Being quick at undressing, I was the first to spring into the bathtub. Okay, same source here, W. Jarman in 1884. Still going along here in chronological order. My arms, my breast, in short, away down through the whole body. Every part was carefully attended to, right down to the soles of the feet. Okay, an account from Emily O. Faithful, Three Visits to America, 1884. Uh, here, each person is undressed and washed from head to foot by the officiating priest on one side of the division and a priestess on the woman's side of the curtain. Okay, an interesting account uh, in an 1893 uh, magazine, engineering magazine, article from a bar ferry called architecture it says the standard manufacturing company manufactured 12 large tubs for use in the mormon temple in salt lake city 12 large tubs we uh, kind of saw what those look like in the endowment house this is a tub pictured above from the standard manufacturing company in pittsburgh the standard porcelain enameled bath. This is around 1893 too. Maybe it looks something like this, maybe something not so elaborate, not sure. All right, uh, here is the washing and anointing room, uh, one of the rooms in the Salt Lake Temple. And you can tell that they have tubs in there. There's one, two, three, four, five tubs in this washing and anointing room. Okay, an account from Reverend Tuttle in Reminiscence of a Missionary Bishop, 1906. Talks about wearing a chemis in the tub, which is kind of different. Maybe this happened in 1906. Uh, maybe it was different in different temples. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe this is a wrong account. But he says, this washing is simply a comfortable but ordinary bath in a lukewarm water, the bather wearing a chemis. I uh, see the pictures above. Okay, another account from a Thomas P. Marshall, Mormonism Exposed, 1908. Uh, the picture above is uh, the front page of the Washington Times, December 14, 1904, I think that says, 1904. Mormons taking oaths of the endowment house. Uh, dressed up in these clothing, not sure if those are actual... Um, temple clothing from 1904 they look like they they might be but they're wearing uh, weird white beards as well which is which is weird but anyway thomas p marshall says uh, you now undress and wait your turn to enter nude one of the bathtubs and be washed clean your whole body must be washed clean every wit by one who is appointed okay thomas continues here after all parts of the body being washed and cleansed, they are then anointed with oil, the secret parts being anointed by yourself. <laughs> so that's something a little different. Probably talking about the pelvic region, or maybe he's talking about the actual genitals, but I kind of doubt it. Secret parts being anointed by yourself. That's not the way I understand it to be. I, th I think um, you don't, you don't, you don't anoint anything uh, by yourself, basically. Okay, uh, an elder J.D. Stead, Doctrines and Dogmas of Brighamism, Exposed, 1911. <clears throat> Brighamism, yeah, the, the Utah church was so much different than the Nauvoo church. Anyway, uh, in the dressing room, all clothing is removed except for the garments, and these are then taken off and handed to one of the attendants as the candidate enters the bathtub. All clothing removed except the garments. This is 1911. But then they go into the washing room and, and the garments are taken off and then they get, um, then they enter the bathtub where they uh, are attended to. Okay, Elder J.D. Stead continues. The man who attends to the washing rubs the lips, the breast, and the loins. Sounds a little uncomfortable, huh? Okay, an account from Stuart Martin, The Mystery of Mormonism, 1920 book. When the candidates are ordained, they are sent downstairs to the washing room. There they are divested of their clothing. They wait in a queue to get into the bath. 
each having his garments over his arm. So taking their garments with them. Okay, uh, Stuart continues. Uh, the bath is quite an ordinary one. Maybe as pictured above. Supplied with hot and cold water. So maybe they had plumbing now. Didn't have to heat up the water with uh, these stoves. And in this, all the new priests step as their turn comes. Their lips and breasts and loins, etc., are washed and anointed. All right, another source here uh, from William M. Payden. His book is Temple Mormonism, Its Evolution, Ritual, and Meaning, 1931. A very important book uh, to track all the changes um, that have been done in the Mormon Temple Endowment and other, other ceremonies. I did a whole video on that, and I used uh, Payden's book uh, quite a bit. Uh, he's pictured above. I believe he was a reverend in uh, Salt Lake City. He says the baths and the dressing rooms for the men are located along the northwest side of this half of the temple. Uh, similar rooms for the women are on the southwest side. Probably talking about uh, the Salt Lake Temple. Okay, Payton continues. Uh, each of these washing rooms contains its quota of bathtubs which are well supplied with hot and cold water. So here we have it, 1931, they still have these bathtubs in the Salt Lake Temple. All right, Payden continues, uh, the candidate being directed to these washing and dressing rooms, maybe locker rooms, maybe as pictured above, this is a locker room uh, from around this time period, and having divested himself of all of his clothing, basically naked, awaits his time in the bath with his special inner garments over his shoulder. All right, Payton continues. A temple worker goes with him into the bath to officiate in these temple lustrations, washing and anointing. And the temple worker says, I wash your mouth and your lips, your breast, your loins, or your pelvic region. Uh, and rains that you may be fruitful in propagating of a goodly seed. Pictured above is kind of a cool picture. Uh, these are temple ordinance workers on the steps of the Salt Lake Temple, uh, 1917. So that's kind of uh, what they wore. Dresses look a lot thicker, like thick uh, cotton. All right, an interesting account here in the Manti Temple Historical Record, 1934 to 1974. An entry on May 1st, 1938, uh, the Manti Temple is pictured above. It's in uh, middle Utah, in the middle of the state. When receiving your endowments, the garment should not be placed on the individual until after it is marked. I think they, they kind of cut it, or, or maybe that was earlier, uh, but the, at some point they were cutting the markings in the breast and, and the belly button. The Masonic symbols, compass, square, ruler, uh, those are Masonic symbols still in the in the LDS garments today. <laughs> Most Mormons don't understand that. Um, but this is 1938, um, presumably doing the washing and anointing ceremony. And in this uh, record, it says all ordinances should be given with closed eyes. <laughs> so I think at this time, some sometime in the 1920s, they put the shield into effect. Um, so they may have had the shield on, or they may have came into the room with the shield on, but then taking it off, taking the shield off to do all the touching of the different parts of the body, because there's a guy named Richard Packham that said that that happened to him, uh, in the 1950s. Uh, so yeah, not quite sure, but, uh, give this ordinance with your eyes closed, <laughs> Uh, presumably because they're naked. Uh, I don't know. Okay, some interesting information uh, from John Charles Duffy. He wrote a, a really good article called Concealing the Body, Concealing the Sacred, The Decline of Ritual Nudity in Mormon Temples, The Journal of Ritual Studies, 2007. I used this uh, a journal article a lot in this video. He did a really good job. Uh, he was a professor, I think, at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Um, all right, so he says that ritual nudity was more dramatically curtailed 
sometime in the early 20th century. I think he says in the 1920s. Uh, the nudity was curtailed through the introduction of the shield. We'll get to what that shield is. That's what I wore when I went through. The, the Paden account that we talked about for the Temple Mormonism book came out, uh, what was it, 1931? Uh, but he was talking about the Washington and anointings in the 1920s. So I think uh, Duffy is right here. The shield was introduced sometime here in the 1920s. Okay, so here's a picture of the shield. Um, it is a white floor-length poncho or shield that was uh, that goes over your naked body. Uh, it's open on the sides. Uh, so yeah, this is what I wore uh, when I went through. Um, the person uh, that was talking about this says, I was 21 when I went through the Mormon Temple Endowment Ceremony and I slipped into this shield over my naked body. I felt nervous. My temple prep class never mentioned nudity. Of course not. And the church never mentions full nudity that we've already gone over. Very hard to find them say anything about this. Okay, uh, so the uh, journal article continues from John Charles Duffy here. This development of the shield probably occurred as part of a revision to temple ordinances enacted by church leaders during the 1920s. Uh, Heber J. Grant, uh, president at this time, at this time, they made a number of uh, changes in the, the 1920s. You can go watch my other video on that. Okay, here, uh, same source uh, from John Charles Duffy's uh, journal article in the Journal of Ritual Studies, tw uh, 2007. Uh, John is pictured above. Uh, by, uh, by the late 20th century, uh, the shield was a broad, loose, shin-length robe comparable to a poncho. It covered the initiate in the front and the back, uh, but it was open at the sides to allow the officiators to touch the various uh, body parts. Uh, and this is what I had on when I went through. Okay, Duffy uh, continues. Uh, with the introduction of the shield, the washing and anointing were reduced to a token dabbing of water and oil on the requisite body parts. Uh, the tubs fell into disuse. So you weren't entirely naked, kind of naked underneath the shield and on the sides of the shield. See the picture above. Uh, I think that's kind of representing uh, Russell M. Nelson's two uh, wives. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you weren't totally naked. You didn't, uh, get into a tub and then have, uh, your naked, your wholly naked body rubbed with uh, water and oil anymore. They'd kind of do it under the shield. Okay. Uh, the Mormon scholar Lester E. Bush, uh, also talks about this in his book, Health and Medicine Among the Latter-day Saints, 1993. Uh, Lester is pictured above. He says that large tubs for a literal ceremonial washing in the temple uh, were replaced by a more hygienic symbolic gesture. More hygienic symbolic gesture. So you're wearing the shield, touching under the shield, not in a full tub is, is what he means here. All right, uh, Jim Whitefield also talks about this. Uh, he says the patron would strip naked and don a shield which slipped over the head and uh, reached down to the ankles. It was completely open at the sides. The patron was then washed in specific places on the body. And, and I can also uh, confirm this too, because that's what happened to me. Okay, there's an interesting account uh, from the ex-Mormon Richard Packham. This was posted by RFM, uh, probably on Facebook, November 26, uh, 2012. Packham is pictured above, I believe, at the ex-Mormon conference. Uh, he says, uh, for the washing and anointing, and he's talking about himself here, uh, in the Idaho Falls Temple in 1952, I, Packham, disrobed in the locker room, put a shield over me, and walked to the washing booth carrying the garment and a white towel. So she, he's got the shield on now, but wait until he, what he says later. All right, so uh, Packham continues. Uh, remember, this is in 1952. Uh, in the washing booth, the shield was removed 
and hung on a hook while the washing and anointing took place. Yes, I was completely naked. So he had the shield on, but then it was removed for the washing and anointing. This is in 1952. After toweling off, the garment was placed on me. The shield was put over me again, and I returned to the locker room. So this is kind of an a intermediate state between total nudity and the shield, it sounds like. As kind of as they were um, moving from tubs uh, to this. Okay, another account from a Jack B. Worthy uh, in his book, The Mormon Cult. A former missionary reveals the secrets of Mormon mind control, 2008. Jack is talking about when he went through the Washington anointings in 1982. He says he was given a white poncho called a shield, which was opened down both sides. I stripped naked and put on the poncho. I felt uncomfortable having my loins washed and anointed. I was not uh, touched on my genitals. I was not. But, I, but it was sufficiently close to surprise me. And that's kind of how I felt, too. <laughs> okay, so uh, I, uh, Kurt Ralph Arman, see my picture up here on the left, uh, went through the Jordan River Temple in Utah in 1987. Uh, my experience was the same as the last slide, uh, the same things that Jack uh, was saying. Okay, uh, some of the wording for the 1990 Temple Endowment uh, Washing and Anointing Ceremony. You can find this at ldsendowment.org. A uh, really good website if you want to check this kind of stuff out. Uh, so here's the wording in 1990. Uh, I wash your lips, your neck, your shoulders, your back, your breast, your loins, that you may be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And then they anoint with oil all the same uh, body parts uh, that they do with water, which we've already talked about. And here's a picture of uh, one of the rooms in, in a temple. Uh, the women used to be required uh, to have these veils over their uh, faces. Kind of, kind of creepy. Okay, the guy over at ldsdiscussions.com. He's pictured here on on the right. I'm not sure what his name is. Um. He put together a meme, it looks like, and it says, As horrifying as it was, having an old man touch my naked inner thigh in the Mormon temple, in earlier times you were completely naked in a bathtub and they washed you. We've talked about this already, just somebody else's experience. I don't think that people realize all of the crazy things that have gone down in the LDS temples uh, even until 1990. And I went through before 1990, and you did all those gruesome ways in which you would kill yourself. You'd slice your neck, you would uh, slice your bowels <laughs> if you were ever to reveal anything in the temple. And you can watch my uh, changes in the Mormon temple uh, video for all that. Okay, so nudity was finally uh, done away with in 2005 in the Mormon temples. Uh, going back to John Charles Duffy's uh, journal article, uh, he says, In January 2005, an unexpected revision to the initiatory procedures all but eliminated ritual nudity. And then he'll explain more on the next slide. Okay, uh, Duffy continues, uh, Initiates are now instructed to clothe themselves in the garment in the privacy of a changing room cubicle. Then to place the shield on top of that. So you wear your garments and the shield on top of that. So you're not naked underneath anymore. Uh, garments, place the shield on top before being presented to the washing room. Remember this change happened in 2005. Uh, Salt Lake City Messenger did a story on it. Uh, UTLM.com. Temple ritual changed again. Okay, uh, Duffy continues, uh, the shield is now closed at the sides, making it essentially a robe. The closing of the shield is possible because the officiators no longer touch any part of the initiate's body other than the head. I think they, they put their hands on your head and then bless each part of your body uh, just with the laying on of hands on the head. So kind of like a blessing, uh, like a healing um, yeah, so <laughs> not naked anymore and they don't touch you all over your body. Okay, so in uh, 
2019, the shield uh, was finally completely done away with because it doesn't make sense to have this shield over your garments, really, right? I mean, <laughs> they like to take uh, these small steps so people don't get as freaked out when they make changes. The small little baby steps. Um, this information is in the Salt Lake City Messenger, uh, May 2019. Sandra Tanner, editor, utlm.org. In 2019, the shield was eliminated, and the person changes in the locker room into his or her garments and puts on the white temple outfit. See picture above. And then they go to the anointing booth where only the forehead is anointed. Okay, uh, that's going to do it for this video, uh, and I thank you for watching the Nudity in the Mormon Temple 1842-2005 to 2005 video.